lines as well. Again, for, you could use this for creating sort of bent notes and things like that, but. Okay, guys, hi. So this is Unders. If you're watching this video, hopefully you've watched the previous part on additive. In this video, all we're going into are the specific additive effects. So we're in the additive section up here on the right hand side and we're looking at what these do and how they work and what the purpose of them is, okay? Now, if you find this sort of video really helpful, if you can, throw a like on the video for me and please subscribe to the channel. It does help me out massively. Okay, so if you watched the last video, we made a little Juno-based thing just by bringing it back in. Now, for what these effects do, I need to something with a bit more harmonic. I have grabbed a violin sample, which is just this plain sample down here. And get rid of that now. And we've made this into this. <coughs> okay. Now, first thing I'll throw out there is these effects aren't post effects. They're affecting the sound in the harmonic content. They're affecting it before it becomes a sound, okay? So you're adjusting them. This effectively adjusts the partials that create the sound, okay? So it's not adding a reverb like we've got on down the bottom here they affect the actual sine waves. So you could, in theory, make these effects happen. What this allows you to do though, instead of making each each uh, partial node change, they will allow you to do it through this. It is processor intensive. It's fine now, me running just this. If we have this on ultra, and we're using these settings, and if we're automating these settings, especially in a project, it is demanding. You'll need to freeze your channels in most cases, unless you're running a Mac Pro, Xeon, beast of some kind. Now, what we're gonna look at first is this first one here, where I've got it on harmonic. What harmonic does is take relevant partials. So your fundamental is your key partial. If you know how tone is created, it's the, the most predominant one. It's the foundation of that tone. This basically allows you to adjust the level of it. So you can take your fundamental out completely by putting it down to 0% here. Up in the middle here, uh, 50, I'll do is fundamental at its default and then you can absolutely hammer it so the fundamental is louder than everything else and it becomes almost just a sine wave again the octave section here is effectively pushing this in relevant harmonic content to the key you're hitting okay Odd and even is whether we push odd or even um, harmonics and partials. So for example, if you were building a sound, you would grab one, three, etc. They're gonna be the odd harmonics, okay? You can keep doing that sequentially and build up source, sign, triangles, etc. Fifths again does the same thing and it's just gonna push the fifths up. Now, what we've done on here, specifically, let's get rid of these. And we've just pushed it up a little bit of percent here, and that makes a minor difference. Yeah? So it's giving the, the more top character back, because that kind of gets lost in the other. It gives it more of a feel of a string going on, okay? Now we can also do pulse and saw, if that changes it slightly and you're gonna hear a difference here. Yeah, so it's giving us more of a tremolo style effect. Let's go back to harmonic. And then we put that back up, it was about 63. That was right the way around. No, it wasn't. There we go. 
Okay, that now let's put breathing on. Okay, so breathing allows you to detune partials. Okay, so if you think how you get a unison going, unison creates two of the same bit of audio, you detune it slightly and it gives you that stereo effect and if you do it with saws it gives you the pulsing resound that you hear in drum and bass. Similar theory but it's doing it to the partials of the sound itself okay. And this works well in strings because of how a string works it gives that sort of feel. It gives the feel of the bow pushing along it's ever so slightly adjusting all of those things. Um, the, the, the way it affects and how much it affects I'm not entirely 100% on it could go and read it up but I believe it's going to affect the relevant odd or even partials dependent on the fundamental that's the way I understand breathing to work in additive now we go stretch shift and magnet now if we look at magnet if you have used Harma or if you've seen um, the how to base series that seamless does he uses Harmer on that which has a particular parameter which distorts and pulls partials together I forget what it's called on Harmer um, it has a plus minus and it works to a weird frequency ratio this is a similar thing it pulls partials together over time and gives a really odd effect it's it allows us to build some very unusual tones it makes for a very cool effect and remember this is all happening before post effects so we can we can edit it in real time it's demanding but it can be done it's, you see in the spectrograph here how it is editing the partials as it happens Okay, so that's magnet. Okay, let's just backtrack. So stretch allows for tuning of all partials equally. So if you shift the lower partials, it's going to shift the higher partials and it all works equally. Um, let's see if we can give some kind of... hear it happen there so we can create that pitch note sound if we grab a low note okay so be honest I'm not entirely sure what you could really use it for apart from making very cool effects um, I don't know anything that would benefit from this if you're trying to recreate a real sound to be honest but it is what it is it's there and it's, uh, it's a nice thing we can do again I found this one if you automate it CPU spike especially on the more complex sound than what we've got here okay now shift does a similar thing shift moves all of the partials up or down based on frequency in hertz so if we grab a low note again yeah now because it's in hertz you could tune it to specific notes and have it move from one relative note to the other but you can do it in semitones as well Again, for, you could use this for creating sort of bent notes and things like that, but you would have to or automate it or create a, a separate patch and use ADSR just for your, your bent notes. But again, completely usable and makes great noises. I can't remember how I have breathing set up now.
be somewhere around there. Okay, so the last ones we've got. Spread, it effectively works like a chorus, except it's just happening before the audio's gone out. So it gives exactly the same sort of effects, works on uh, rate, ramp being the amount of time it takes in, amount being the amount it affects, kind of like a wet dry. If you really crank it up, you'll hear how that's affecting and giving the sort of stereo perception there. Um, auto pan, exactly what it says it was auto pan, hammers from left to right. I prefer the spread because it just seems less obvious. Although perhaps not up that high. Okay, so those are the effects that are available in the additive side of it. One thing I will mention about how CPU heavy they were, we've kept this down on 130 partials. We can bump it all the way up to 600. Now, if, again, I've chosen low notes for a reason here. If we were doing higher up notes, they are going to benefit from more partials. So they require more partials to create that detailed higher sound. All in all, considering that's all being generated on the fly with additive synthesis and a couple of effects, it's a pretty cool little string sound. And we've just made that out of one sample and using some effects, dropped a reverb on the end just on default settings. That is it. Guys, I've been Unders. Thank you very much.